Okay, welcome to another live stream podcast. This one is a bit earlier than usual because Fiji is about to kick off. Well, in not long. And the guys that we've got on the podcast are going to Fiji and then it might be a bit more complicated. So if you've read the title, you will know this is about Wave 360s. Now, that is quite a niche market. There's probably not thousands and thousands of people trying to learn Wave 360s. But I have had that question by quite a few people. I've been trying to make a few videos, but I thought maybe the best thing to do would be a discussion because the guys that really want to learn it are going to be fully invested and they're going to sit through. They're going to listen to all the tips and stuff like this. So I brought on a couple of different guests. We first have uh, a guy who is probably going for his first ever world title. He's got a there's a chance there with the way the tours look in this moment. So we're bringing in this guy who is the 360 specialist. And then we've also got a guy who is trying Wave 360. So probably like a few of you guys at home, you don't all ask questions, but maybe he is going to ask the questions that you are going to like. And then we've got me. I can actually Wave 360, I think, pretty good. Not as good as the one guest. Let's bring them on. It's obviously who they are because they're on the <laughs> thumbnail. <laughs> we've got Mark Parry and we've got Paul Van Bellen. Oh. How are we doing, boys? Pretty good. Ec excellent, Benny. Thanks for uh, hosting this. Yeah, well, let, let's see. Like I said, for you, it's going to be a learning process, Paul. Like you are, I've seen a few videos from Nalu. You've attempted a few 360s. You, you know, where are you at? Let's maybe let people know at home because maybe they're in the same boat. Yeah, look, basically, I've only really just started trying them, to be honest. Like it's... The thing for me has been getting the right waves to try them in. And that was one of the questions I had for Mark because, you know, I'm finding that, you know, you, you're wanting a particular type of wave to try them in and they don't happen every day. So uh, I'm now sailing in better conditions. So I'm starting to try them. So Okay, perfect. And then yeah. we've got Mark, who is the 360 specialist. I thought I was good. Then we did a little comp last year and he absolutely schooled me. Um, you you like a three sixty, Mark? Is that fair to say? Yeah, I like three sixties. I feel like it's a it's a very efficient move to do, especially to pull in contests. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when we're filming Gran Canaria, Gran Canaria is spe especially a good place to to do them. And you know, as we we saw already in that clip we did, um, you can do like those different varieties. And you know, so I, I feel like it's a good place to do them there and to learn yeah. that. So if you haven't seen the video, me, Pons and Mark did a 360 video last year. I think it was 20 minutes we did um, with, to do the three different styles of 360. Again, a few people are asking, what are the three different styles? How are they, you know, different? Mark, maybe just talk us through. I mean, maybe there's not three. I came up with this three idea because in my head there was three. But maybe just go through kind of those three different ways of doing them. Yeah. Well, after we did the video, yeah, we realized maybe it's just like a different variation of the same one. So, yeah. but yeah, basically, like there's the, the one where you kind of uh, go 12 o'clock. So kind of you carve into it, you carve back into the wave. That one is pretty satisfying because you're basically just, you know, getting spat into the back into the wave and which is. What I would imagine, so, like the more efficient one for you, Paul, if you're doing them in uh, in Australia, and then you can do the Wymery ones, which they are super useful for spots like Pozo, you know, Gran Canaria and stuff. So you... Wymery one is when you get height, when you get a bit of air. Yeah, and you kind of throwing them a little bit more down the line and jumping into the wave, you know, instead of like carving back into it vertical, you are more like jumping into it you know so you are using that uh, down the line momentum to kind of then put the board flat into the lip and just jump back into the wave this one is like the, what we were talking about is like the half half thing you know where you're kind of going down the line and then you i'm putting the board vertical here but at the same time i'm, ke I'm keeping that uh, down the line and forward momentum to get the all that pop and projection back into the wave instead yeah. of carving into it. And then the other one? The other one, which is the more, uh, how would you call it? Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the one that I don't do, don't really do that much. It's like the roll round thing, which basically you just roll over your, yourself and then the board kind of 
stays left behind and then you pull yourself back into position and yeah but this one we realized it was uh yeah a little yeah i'm just i'm looking through my list just in yeah. case you see me go quiet i've got a list of 360s and there are a few that will sort of back up what we're going to be talking about in this podcast so if you're listening to this audio only i apologize probably worth going on youtube and uh and kind of trying to find it out because it isn't it isn't so easy. Um, Oi, Mark, when you're um, when you're learning, is it better to start with uh, Weimaru's first? You think, or just go straight for the the vertical way three sixty? So, so I would say, like me, I learned the three sixties in Pozo. So for me, the, it was always way more efficient to try the Weimaru once, basically because you you always get more consistency with them, as I said. It's like easier to kind of fake that uh, pop and projection back into the wave. But I feel like if you have a wave that offers you um, the chance to do the like the carvey vertical one, I feel like sometimes it's better, you know, uh, to do them that, that way. Um, and I would think if you sell in Australia in good waves that it, where you can find that section that's kind of, you know, breaking and here you get like that open face, but you can climb back and carve into the lip. Um, those ones are better for the, those kinds of, of wave. You know, so I would say you kind of need to adapt to the situation. But most of the time, if you have like a shittier, more side-on wave, it's easier to do the Weimar you ones. You know, yeah. Yeah. you're going to get a, a higher rate of landing. So yeah, basically. Oh, well, we can get into it now. I, I don't want to start explaining too much. It's difficult though, isn't it? And like, it is complicated. This is what's happened. When I've ever tried to make the video, to actually sit down and make a really concise video that is very clear, is very difficult because it can get confusing. So I think we have to, you have to really firstly work out what conditions you're sailing in. I think that's the, the first time. So is it cross shore? Is it cross onshore? Is it cross off? Because there's definitely easier 360s to do in the different conditions you sail in. Exactly. Um, so first, I think we talk about pozo style conditions. So cross onshore, almost onshore, you can do them in, and going round to a bit more side shore. But let's say cross onshore. The the most consistent way to do that 360 is what Mark? Which which style would you go down? The Wyman Rui one, 100%. Yeah. You know, just just because when you keep that forward momentum and you use that uh, momentum and to, to project you back in the wave, it's easier, you know, because with the onshore or side on wind, uh, it will automatically uh, help you go back into the wave. Um, so you, you're, gonna, you're just going to get a higher rate always. You know, and then if you try to do those when it's cross off, yeah as you've been said, then uh, might be uh, way harder, you know, because you might have to be kind of mid-face, uh, fully under the lip, uh, you know, so then it gets harder to do those when it's like that. Um, and then it might be more efficient to do the carby one, you know. I'm just yep. going to add that in just to make it a bit clearer. Just one from yeah. uh, Pozo. Maybe this is going to work. Let's see. Can you boys see that? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, for anyone obviously watching on YouTube, this is the more Pozo style. You want to talk us through that, Mark? I mean, yeah. you might not be happy with that because the way the wave looks and whatever, yeah. but I think for everyone else at home, it's quite an obvious yeah. position you can see. Yeah. So here, once again, I mean... This is like the half, half one that we were unsure of, you know, after we did that video. But basically, you're, I'm kind of mixing. You, you can see, you always want to do, first of all, like that's like the basic trip, the, uh, tip of a 360. You want your, your board flat into the wave because that's what's going to, that's what's going to give you the projection in front of the wave. You know, if your board is flat, it's not flat or it's a little bit on the rail, the lip's going to hit the board. And it's going to kind of just absorb you and you're not going to be able to project. So here what I did was just I had that uh, bottom longer bottom turn, you know, was trying to keep the, the momentum. And then I just waited until the last second when I when the wave had the most push. And then I just 
push the gear into it, as you can see. Just try to push the gear into it and bring the board flat. And as I get the projection, you just kind of jump into it. And then you close the sail, push with the front hand, and you tack your back foot uh, towards the glue, you know? So, it, because if you don't tack your back foot and, and close with the back hand and push with the front hand, then it happens uh, this thing where the, where the board just goes one way and then the sail goes the other way. And then you're kind of just fighting to be over the rig again. So it's an easier, like closing the sail and pushing, it's an easier way to, to land always uh, into the direction you want to go again. Because I've only just started trying them, I mean, I'm, I, the, one th the first thing that I know I'm doing wrong is I'm just not sheeting out enough. Yeah. Like I, I'm going into it and just – because I'm just used to doing a bottom turn and a top turn and, you know, you get used to how much you need to sheet out to do that. But with this, it's like it's another level. You, you've yeah. got to go further than what you yeah. are used to, aren't you? And that's, that's, that's where I'm just kind of going, okay, I need to sheet out way, way more basically. Yeah. yeah. I think that's good. I, like for me, this was not the first type of 360 I landed. Um, but before we go into that, Steve Thorpe, how many attempts, Mark, did it take before you landed one? Uh, it's hard to say. <laughs> I, I, it was years ago. I don't know. Yeah. And what was this first type of one you landed? Was the like this one, really? Really? Yeah. Okay. This kind See, of I, so I for me, my first one I landed, which was the more turning into the wave and kind of pushing the rig around the side which i'll show you in a second and yeah. then this style is if you grew up in pozo if you sail a lot in pozo this is the one you see everyone doing yeah. so i think it obviously depends on where you're from exactly. um but like even now just even starting this conversation i'm already going oh my god this sounds confusing to anybody <laughs> out yeah. there like i don't know paul is, is it already confusing is that made it confusing well, now you've clarified a few things. I think, um, yeah, you know, whether it's cross on, cross shore, or cross off. I think that's like, yeah, the con yeah, that's the big thing is the conditions that you're in and what you need to do in those particular conditions. Yeah, I think that's because obviously you do have to change up your style a bit depending on the size of the wave, the wind direction, how it's throwing. I see. The other thing too is. Sometimes I'm lucky enough to be in a in a good wave where it's peeling down the line like a down the line style wave, but I get a bit worried. Like I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to bottom turn into the into the wave, like you know where the wave's breaking. But if I stuff it, I'm just going to be coming down with the lip and just you know a heap of mess basically. So I'm kind of you know you know what I mean. Like if if a wave's breaking down the line. You you think oh, okay, there's a bit of a risk to try to do a wave three sixty in the in the you know the yeah. breaking part of the wave because if you mess up there you, you you're coming down in a bit of a heap so that's I agree. yeah so that you know that that's kind of gnarly sometimes especially if the waves you know logo plus high you know there's a bit yeah. of power there in that section so i think that's where the waimaru and like that wave you just had then that was like a a barely a head high wave yeah so probably to make it a bit less scary is to try in that kind of crumbly wave right i mean otherwise yeah. anything bigger it all starts to get a bit uh you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. as you say, even I think even when you can do them, if you're talking at, you know, you're riding a logo to mass size wave, it gets gnarly, you know, even, even if you can do them because it, it can go wrong. So, yeah, definitely if you start trying them, better to try it when it's a little smaller, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I, I definitely cool. think like the Waimarui style first because that actually weirdly is, is super safe because when you're landing out the back of a wave, well, you're literally getting away from all that sort of nastiness of the, of the, of the lip. So yeah. the more you sort of project out like this sort of style, yeah. Yeah. you're yeah. actually, it's actually safer. So if yeah. I was to turn into the lip earlier, it was a bigger wave. You're going to end up in the lip. So when you first start trying them, I think just projecting out the back and yep. landing in a controlled fashion, which, again, to some people might say, yeah, well, that's easy to say, Ben. But that is definitely what I would suggest getting your head around first is the movement. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think the problem is I grew up watching JP videos doing Wave 360s into Mast High Who Keep, and I thought that's what Wave 360s were. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to... it's true. I, I didn't even realize you could do a Wave 360 and cross onshore. And I remember reading a magazine once and Bjorn Dunkebeck did one. And I was like, oh, you, you don't need this like down the line conditions to do it. And it's recently to the younger guys now, they're like, what, you idiot. Of course you do, because they've been watching Pozo yeah. videos for I don't know yeah, how long. Yeah. But 360s in Pozo back in the day weren't normal. That, that wasn't a normal thing to be pulling off. So it was only when like really clue first riding came out that they became kind of like a go-to. And I always remember Danny Bruce when he first rocked up in Pozo. He'd been on the world tour. Then he'd gone out. He'd got a job. He was working for his dad. And then he'd come back. And I didn't even know who he was. And there was this guy on this random gastrocell, I think it was. And he was just pulling off these Wave 360s, but on nothing. And I'm talking like... The, the wave wasn't even as big as my laptop screen, but he was, it was like the Waimaru style and he was projecting himself in, pulling it round and landing and kind of sailing away. I was like, how, yeah. the, what? And <laughs> he killed it that year. Like, and it was, I'm not joking. I've never seen that before in my life until that point. And then that was kind of when I, then that started progressing and everyone started doing the more Waimaru one after that. Uh, it was he was for me the first guy I saw doing it properly uh, early, yeah. like early 2000s? I think it was. So, when, when you're bottom turning, you're literally just trying to sheet out as hard as you, but like you can't, like, like there's, there's not a, a point where you're sheeting out too much, you're literally just sheeting out yeah. as hard as you can, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so your, your hands are really spread apart. Like, I, I actually. I forgot about that, but I always try to reach really far back into the boom, like almost like a lot of times I touch the clip. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of want to like to help shit out. You kind of want to keep your elbow close to you and your arm bent. I think that really helps, you know, whether if you are just carving into it, especially or or if you are um, or just like to bring the to push the gear into that flat board position, you know? And and what yeah. helps me to, to put the board flat, it's like you stand a little more on the tail kick of the board, like you standing a little bit further back. And that will always help the the board to come up flat. Yeah. Do you reckon you can pause that video just as like he's hitting the, like when he's kind of vertical? Because I'm just trying to see the body position. Yeah, it's very... Like, yeah, see, so it's, okay. I tell you what, what I feel in this because this is slightly onshore. This is at uh, this is above the airport, is it? Yeah, yeah. So like this is still quite onshore. And when you get those Waimarui type ones, where you get in the pop, the Pozo style three hundred and sixty, where you actually get lift. My, I feel like my I, what I'm trying to do is project my body down the wave almost, like mm -hmm. you. Which sounds weird because. And it makes total sense when you think about it. And I had the same with goiters. I was landing my goiters off the back of the wave. And someone said, look, just project inwards like you're doing an aerial. Because what you do is when you're going towards the wave clue first, you're so busy trying to get pop off the wave that you use the wave too much. So you go into the wave rather than actually pressing against the wave and popping which I think that was a, like a massive thing for me, like huge. As soon as I kind of found that pop and that moment, again, with this style of 360, that was when I went, ah. And, and yeah. then it's like, oh, well, it's actually not that hard. You've just got to make sure the time is right so you don't get stuck because sometimes you can get a bit, a bit stuck. But it's a, for me, it's about the press. So as you're coming up, that press, and it's earlier than you think, when you watch the videos, it looks nothing like what I'm doing in my head. <laughs> Sounds stupid, this. But when it, so what I'm doing in my head is, in again, in this style of 360 we've got on the screen now, in this style of 360, in my head, my board is facing more towards the rock on the right. And, and I'm pushing, pressing early. But when I watch the videos, my board ends up going vertical. But when I'm pressing, I'm pressing when the actually board is facing quite down the wave. 
it's it's again it, it's very hard to explain that's kind of why i haven't made the video yet yeah. <laughs> because it, it there's there's definitely a moment of that press where you use the pop and as you pop then the wave hits you as you've already popped it, yeah. it, it, it yeah. happens at the same time but you can't have the wave and then do the pop unless the wave is super powerful yeah I think it, it's as what you are describing, it's a little bit what happens when you stand, like when you bring your hip, when you push with the hip to bring the board flat, and then yeah. suddenly you stand on the kick of the board. Like you yeah. have a feeling you're a little bit more down the line, but because you stand on the kick of the board, that's probably why you're getting the board just suddenly goes vertical. Yeah. And, and just, yeah, just, just uh, stays in that good position earlier than you think you know that's yeah. probably why that's exactly well i think that's exactly what it is but i'm already setting up like i'm almost in a goiter position like like you can see the mass the oh. mass is over the board's over if i freeze frame that you'd be like well, that's not a wave 360 it looks more like a goiter you know in that position because all your weight is committed like inside so there, you, there's, a, there's a chance that if you don't get it right you kind of fall the wrong way so it's it's getting that press and then you press it around you and it and it's like a good forward loop the gear goes around you you know it, it feels like you you literally pulling it around you like like in a in a good forward loop so it, it, it's an interesting one but what i think we should probably touch on is for me the first 360s that i got which i think are, are much more easy to get in your head as someone who's let's say just trying 360s i think <laughs> we'll yeah, see yeah, no, sure. now because um and it is a little bit more like you're rolling around but let's see if i can find one um i did try about sorry about a month or two ago a couple of months now i um had a few kind of semi success well you know semi attempts at this Waimaru. but one thing i found was I, I, you know, I got up in the air, but then I didn't tuck my back leg in and then the tail of the board hits the water and that stops your rotation. So that was another thing I realized is that you go up and then you really need to lift, lift the tail up as well, obviously. Yeah. Like, yeah. As, soon, yeah, as, I mean, it, the, as yeah. soon as you feel the impact, that's when you kind of push with the front hand and tuck your the front hand. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think back to, yeah. Yeah. Basically you are shitting in and pushing with the front hand at the same time you are tucking your back leg underneath you because that's what's going to help you direct yeah, the board yeah, back again. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you don't do that tucking thing, then uh, as, I, as I said, the board just kind of stays behind and you get those 360s where the kind of the nose goes first and then you have to roll over it and then it gets a little more complicated. Oh, this so would be a good video. Wow, this look is, at that position. Look how sheeted out he is. I was going to say, this is like the early 360s, which is <laughs> one of the first ones I got, which is, you can see, you're basically doing everything before the wave and then pushing through. Again, you can see it's a totally different style of 360. Yeah. So how I think about this is I'm basically it's obviously you've got to time it right, but you're you're doing all that that position. You're so clue first. So as you would like go for like a really vertical hit, but then you go even further past that and you're basically putting all the gear to the one side of you and then using the wave to kind of just roll around that last bit. And I think well, they... for me, this was the easier one to to learn, like in my head. But these are the ones we grew up on watching the videos, Ben. It was more this style, right? Exactly. Ex uh, and exactly. That's that's because that, that's all we knew. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, you know, you, it's not until you kind of get into it and you start looking at it, which is why I'm, I'm worried this three types of ways to 360 or whatever gets confusing. But, I mean, essentially, you're just trying to get it round. And it, if it's a little bit more onshore – this this can well if you're not smart onshore but if it even cross shore it's easy you just got to keep going it gets harder the more cross shore it is it gets harder to go clue first that's right isn't it if it's more yeah. onshore you end yeah. up 
getting to the point where you're like, frigging hell, you just need a little tap from the wave and the thing will go to the side of you. Yeah. If you well, find it right. Well, what happens to me is I'm just not shooting out enough, so I'm getting backwinded as I'm going up the wave, essentially. Or, like, not fully backwinded, but just enough wind to get around the other side of the sail and it completely just stuffs me up, you know. I've got to really work on that. What, what, yeah. what I would say is interesting, again, for me when I was learning, really windy. I, I found, like, this style of 360 that I'm doing here, I could be absolutely wound, like, cross on shore, and you just turning but you've got to commit if you get the timing wrong it's over because you've got so much power you can't uncommit it's not yeah. like you can start going up and go oh i'm just going to do a turn you, no. you commit to the inside rail and soon as you've committed to that inside rail like at this point when it's really windy as soon as you're there there's no way you're getting out of it because probably the waves aren't big enough so you've got to keep going and then it doesn't matter if you get to there even if you jump out the top and you pull in, that pulling in with the back hand, pushing out with the front hand and pulling the back leg up, thats I would say that's pretty key. Um, again, like a forward loop, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not a forward loop, but it's it very similar, very similar things. With that Weimaru, do you have to hit a, um, a wave that's um, breaking or can you do it just like, does it, yeah, do you, is that, essentially what you want to be doing or does it can you just launch it off a you know just a, a steep part of the wave that's not breaking and that's still okay or that's like the good and bad thing about that the Wamaru one is that you can kind of fake it so yeah it's the that's why for me it was like pozo on share style conditions it was easier you know because you can kind of get that uh, pop and projection without really having to go vertical like this one i feel like as Ben said, you really have to commit to the rail and you kind of need uh, the right part of the wave to project you back in. And the other yeah. one, um, you can kind of fake it a little more if you really uh, understand and kind of yeah, know how to force the gear into the, that pop position, into that uh, vertical position. This is Dieter van der Eiken. Yeah. And that, that you see this one, you can see as he hits it here, if he doesn't pull in and get enough power in the sail there, it's not going to go at yeah. all. You've got to get that bit right there. Yeah. That's what pulls it back under him. If you can't get that or the mass, say the mass clips the wave here, which is happens to a lot of people, like yeah. a big common mistake would be mass hitting wave there yeah. and you can't pull it in. Well, you don't but pull in quick enough. A trick what I found for the mast to not hit is you're basically, as soon as you get that, you feel the wave hit underneath your board, you kind of push with both hands because that's kind of going to free the sail up a little bit and make it go a little flatter. And if you just kind of go with the, just with the projection, sometimes you just go backwards like that. So it's just a way I found to kind of free the the mass tip of the cell, you know, you kind of just push with both hands when you, when you feel yeah. that uh, heat underneath the board. I need to make a list. How many points are we up to already? Oh, this is... <laughs> but, it, <laughs> not like, but that's kind of why I thought maybe a podcast, someone who's into it might list the whole podcast and only take away one thing because yeah. essentially any more than one, you're going to confuse yourself, but maybe there's little nuggets within this whole discussion, because like I said, every time I've tried to make a video, you can nail it down, but there's so many. Yeah. But if this happens and, and if the wave does this and, and if you're over, you know, like there's so many little things. Um, yeah. Again, I know it's not a big section of people who are trying to learn this move. Um, so it, it might be, like I said, it might be interesting for a few. I'm just, I think, what about this yeah, one? sorry, Benny. I was going to say the other the other thing I found with the Waimaru when I <laughs> oh, oh my god that's crazy isn't it wow that's just a hardcore version of is that is that Mar is that Mark Angulo yeah I mean there's some there's some 
it's some rad videos. I mean, he is definitely. Did he invent? I'm pretty sure he invented it. Oh no. Um, yeah, or the goose screw or whatever. Or yeah, I'm, of... I'm pretty sure he invented nearly every move coming, <laughs> coming up. But one thing I've found for anyone listening who's in my boat, just trying to start or learn, I, I found um, the first time I tried the Waimaru, I was surprised how easy it was to actually try because it essentially all it was was it was just a, a slightly harder bottom turn without doing a top turn and just trying to continue going around. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like even if you, you don't make it, you just try and just – you just go, I'm just going to bottom turn as hard as I can into this section and just see what happens. Because if you go off the top of the wave, you'll just fall off the back. But at least you get that feeling of just, get, you know, not not worrying about the top turn and just worrying about getting up up to the top of the wave. You know what I mean? That, that kind yeah. of... I, I think that's what people should be trying. I mean, yeah, I've got... <laughs> I just... <laughs> So right, I'm going through, I've got folders and folders of stuff. So it's, it's sometimes <laughs> difficult to find exactly the right. Um, but this is, this is Justin trying some at my local beach. So, you know, it might be a, applicable to a few of you guys. What's he got for us? Okay. So this, I would say, is a common problem. Mark, have you see, you've seen this a few times? Show me. Sorry, I was just looking at, at the at some clips as well. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. that's what the, that that's what Paul was saying. Like you are basically not uh, sh shitting out enough. You, you are not uh, opening the clue enough, and then uh, leaving your front arm uh, close to you and bent. No, so yeah. then you are just getting backwinded. So at this point, how does he solve? How does he fix that? To fix that, yeah, I would say just try and leave the clue open as as long as he can, and then just leave that front arm. Like the, I feel like it sounds stupid, but like the front hand, it's something that really helps um, to bring the the gear in that vertical position. You know, because if you if you keep it bent and close to you, it will. Uh, free up the clue um, way faster and easier, you know? So yeah. then you have all that freedom. You know, you, your hand doesn't need to be as as far back and the, and you can still open the clue, you know? So and it also like gives some both. stability to yeah. the front. Yeah. But, but, but Mark, you were saying before that when you do it, you pretty much are touching the clip on the boom. Why don't you just, you know, like I'll just say to myself, all right, when I go into this turn, I'm literally just going to reach down the boom to grab just just – because if you look at that guy's bottom turn, his his hands are they're not very far down the boom, are they? Like he could, he needs to uh, get his rear hand further down the boom, right? Yeah, basically when you spread the hands apart, all that gives is stability and control. You know, like uh, especially in in conditions where like pose, like you, you're going to be powered up, you, it just gives you more control of that power that you have in the sail. You know, and allows you to, uh, yeah, just to not get pulled around as much. You know, I think yeah. it makes sense. You know, if your hands are like this, the power is just going to be coming in through the clue, through the front of the sail, and then, you know, you, you don't yeah. feel as good. And then if you, you spread yourself apart, you have all that control, you know, yeah. and then it's easier to move the sail around even when you're powered up. But I'm just thinking for that setup, like if you said to... You know, if I said to myself, I'm just going to force that rear hand further down than what you even think is logical, because usually you can always go further than you think and just literally go, I'm going to go try and grab the clip, even if you don't quite get there. But that's going to get you in a much better position to start yeah. with, isn't it? I mean, because that's that's my problem. I, I know I'm not reaching down far enough, basically, yeah. Yeah. even though, okay. yeah. Every time we do clinics, that's actually something I say. With windsurfing, you never do it enough. Like you always need to over exaggerate things because yep. you, even though you are th you think you are doing it, you are not even close. Yeah, where you should be, you know. So that's no, why that's right. over, over exaggerating all these little steps or tips, whatever you want to call it. I think it's really helpful. Yeah, yep. commit commit into that inside rail with the rig open. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's seen that uh, Grusku video. That one of the guys we had like the Send It Academy and Mike, one of the guys that's on it, made a little uh, a video, 
which is like five days of his step by step thing. And that is super useful. You can like it's basically laid out next to one of mine and you can see just the progression and how it happens. And that is exactly the same as a wave 360, you know, the goose screw, which is just for anyone who doesn't know, let's clear it up. A goose screw is just a wave 360 where you land off the back of the wave. So it's essentially the same move, but you don't land back in. And it obviously had a name because before they knew they could land back in, they were landing at the back and it was kind of like a finishing move. So I think back in the day when wave sailing first had uh, competitions, they had um, a transition points. I think so if you duck jived out the wave, if you jumped out the wave, you would get extra points for transition out the wave. So the goose screw was that first massive, like cool transition out the wave. And then obviously the better they got, they started landing back in. And then it obviously the name changed a bit. So what's the difference between a goose screw and Waimaru? Waimaru is a flat water goose screw, basically. Chris Wyman, wow. when Freestyle first came out, he his freestyle move was a was a, a wow. goose screw on flat water. And before then, no one had seen it on flat water. So then it was called the Waimaru. Uh, okay. The other thing I'm noticing, look, I'm trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about here, but if I look at... Um, this guy's bottom turn, he's standing very vertical upright in the bottom turn, which I imagine gets you in a bad position. Like you want to be leaning into the turn a lot more to, it helps you open up the clue, right? Cause he, he says quite vertical. So by the time you go up, yeah. you kind of, you're not in a good. The thing is he is already is that... going in for the forward loop pull in. But the problem mm -hmm. is you can't do that until you have really pressed at this point. You've got to be open and press into that inside. And, yep. and actually, the bit that he does here, he needs to do later. Yeah. You see what I mean? If he carries on open round and then does this at the end, it actually would work. Okay. In, in terms of a goose screw, you know, out of the Is back. It because the reason I say about this leaning in, because I know if I watch, if I was to get myself filmed, I'd probably look pretty similar to him in a lot of the times. Like I'm not, I'm not committing to that turn hard enough, and I'm probably not leaning into the turn enough because you just, you just yeah. get lazy. Like you know what I mean. Like you just get used to say you, you've got to push yourself a bit to do something new. You know, otherwise yeah. you end up just going a bit sort of half-hearted. And, and also give yourself some space. You know, like. Is actually quite close to the wave there, not super close, but if you just give yourself a bit more room to turn into, oh, yeah. uh, I you know you can go a bit earlier as well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So you mean just go out and, into the flat area a bit more, like go in the yeah. front of the wave and just draw out the bottom turn a bit more and get it around a bit. Okay. Yeah. Especially for the sort of turning in. Yeah. 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 That's what I was if you want to go past twelve o'clock, mm. like the one I showed before, where the board That's... comes kind of right round. You can come out a bit more into the flats and just fucking aggressively yeah. turn back in. That's it a good point, actually, point. Benny. That's a good point, you know, because sometimes when you're surfing the wave, you're trying to stay on the wave, but this you can just fang out into the flats and try and do a big arc, you know, 180-degree turn. Yeah, okay. I mean, Chris Friss yeah. was quite famous for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the roll run one. The roll run. He'd come right out in front of the wave and almost yeah. he'd be able to go so clue first and so contorted, he could literally do the 360 without a wave, but yeah, then right. the little bit of wave would just hit him and that would be enough just to get you around. And again, there's no wrong or right ways. You find up your own way of doing it and all that sort of practice. Again, like I tell the guys on the coaching clinics, like I got them all practicing um, goose screws and, and wave 360s this year because it actually helps your wave riding, helps you go, you know, realize how much clue first you can go before you, 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 know, you can literally go way further than you think. But until yeah. you actually go for a wave 360, you will never push to the point of that. So if you if you get yeah. people to try goose screws and tell them to keep the clue open, commit to that inside rail, they go, hang on a minute, I can go all the way up there. And then when they start doing turns again, a bit more mm. onshore turns where the clues open, you see them going way more vertical because they've realized that actually I can commit to that. And that, that can be really interesting to see their brain. They're not thinking about it. And then suddenly their wave riding's improved by trying. Yeah. I was just thinking too, for people who don't have any good waves around them, but a bit of flat water and wind, like 
I guess you could practice just going into a jibe and just doing the move, obviously, without a way. You know what I mean? Like, just without completing the jibe, but opening the clue up and just see, you know, I mean, get that feeling of going around and what do you think? Is that is that is that, is that worth anything? Or? But at the same time, you have to be careful of your feet and your ankle because at some point it's actually helpful to get a little bit of a, a point to to press and spin if you if you haven't got that release or that little bit of turn or a little okay. bit of edge, yeah like sure the and also yeah, okay. I think sometimes with the wave you've got a focal point mm -hmm. so it helps you commit to it more okay whereas when it's flat water you haven't got that kind of point of reference but yeah. you, for sure you can for sure you can yeah yeah I was just thinking because, you know, there's obviously, I mean, I'm pretty lucky. I get to, in, in Gerald and there's plenty of days I could try, but I'm sure there's lots of people around the world that, you know, they, they, they don't have necessarily great waves all the time. So I was wondering, you know, yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. But definitely, I mean, I'm just going to try and pick out some fails if I can. Because it's good to look at the fails because then you can kind so of see what's going wrong. Sorry, Mark, did you say before, so when you're bottom turning, did you say you, so yeah, you, yeah your front hand, obviously the, the hand closest to the mast, did you say you're pulling that towards you? At that, or, or Sorry, is that what you're saying? Like you're pulling that towards you or not? So in the, in the, you do in the that, bottom I mean, we can start. I mean, I, I don't want to start like the, maybe the, calling it halfway through, but I mean, when you bottom turn, basically what you do is you, you push the rig, the rig forward, no? And yeah. then your chest just uh, leans onto the inside part of the rail, no? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. So when you want to kind of go vertical, what you do is you push with the tip of your feet and then you bring your hip in. That's what's going to allow you to, for the fast change, to bring the, the, the board vertical. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. yeah. So when you go from from having the sail forward like that to then going vertical and putting your <laughs> inside towards in, towards the wave, yeah, that is when you shift to the front hand because that's what that's what's going to help you to lean on the back part of the board and then keep the clue open. Mm -hmm. You may okay. have a different one. Maybe it's easier to understand because I'm just here in the screen. Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. I'm just trying to imagine like the feelings I've got as I'm bottom turning into the yeah. wave because that's. I sort of work more on the feeling that it's hard sometimes to yeah. technically talk about it, but yeah. Which which uh, uh, 360 do you kind of associate yourself with more trying? Like this kind of jumpy one? Because you can see that it throws the work at the body. It's straight pushing that way and then you pull everything in. But do you see yourself doing that or more the one into the wave? Paul. Oh, sorry, you're talking about me. <laughs> I yeah, talking no, no, but which, which one do you see yourself trying? Um, like, yeah, well, I think that that to me looks like a safer way to start because, yeah, because if it goes wrong, I sort of fall off the back of the way, whereas the other one seems a bit more critical and a bit more, it almost seems more advanced because you, you've got to get the timing spot on and, and like just the... The waves, you got to have just the right wave, just the right timing. There's a few more variables that are a bit trickier, whereas that the other one seems like it's more, you can use it on more, you know, more situations or something. Someone says, yeah. Matty Claire, so is that a good idea? Are we going to see a progression series? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'll, I'll stick the GoPro on my head and, uh, you know, see if I can, uh, that might be a cool thing to do for sure. Can, I, I uh, think it would be. I think for me it's like, someone trying to learn a move whether it be in mountain biking golf or you know whatever i like to see those progression videos where you see someone you know coming up for winter yeah. or tricky because at whatever level you're at you 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 grow out of them but i think when i was learning moves i'd love to have seen progression videos because you see things in you and you go yeah ah, and how did they overcome that oh they did this yeah um, yeah no that's cool uh, next summer i'll uh we're going into winter here, but uh, yeah, next summer it's uh, I'll definitely put on the list. It'll be cool. 
what uh let me just go mark talk me through what went wrong on this one if we can i actually don't know what it is i just know you didn't make it i'm i'm mark is it um is there any particular wind strengths that you reckon someone learning is like ideal like yeah you know? i feel like you just gotta be comfortable you know i feel like as soon as you start getting too powered up you are fighting with the rig so if you know what you're doing it's fine but yeah you know, I feel like you just got to feel that you have just the right amount of power to drive you around. But yeah. Not, you know, not overpowered, you know? Yeah, like yeah, sure. To have a little bit of uh, power, but not yeah. you know? So well, I would guess like, yeah, as long as you're comfortable on, on it. Yeah, yeah, sure, you, sure. You what would you say went wrong with this one, Mark? With this one? I mean, looking at it, like yeah, I didn't see much, but I think it's a, it's a, the wrong se section as well, kind of. Yeah, and it, the board is a little bit on rail there. Yeah, that's a key point, isn't it? it yeah. If if your board is on rail there, you do not get that the nice bang the, the pressure mm -hmm. back off. So he probably could have made it because he had that that forward momentum. Um, just I, I would say the board should have been a little flatter, and then keep going. And then he, he should have pulled, uh, like pushed with the front hand a little earlier because, yeah, you, you can see the, the, the tip of the sail gets caught up and he kind of gets a rotation, but he just goes with it. And he probably he should have just pushed and, uh, and sheeted in just to get that tack and get the sail back up again to get the power to go back into the, in, into the wave, you know? Yeah. Have you got – yeah, sorry, man. No, no, no. Go ahead. What um, do you have any issues getting caught up in the straps or anything like that with this move? Or yeah, caught up anything in the straps. Like, oh yeah, like your feet and the foot straps. Do you ever have any issues there with this? Because there's a lot of there's a bit of a twisting kind of thing. Like if you're falling off or anything like that, is it? Not really. I, I feel like no. as, as long. I mean, worst case scenario, I guess if you are doing it in a punchy, in a punchy wave, and then you're coming down with a leap and your back foot comes out or something, then it's. It gets, uh, uh, okay. but I feel like as long as you are conscious about that tucking in again, you know, about that pulling and pushing yeah. and tucking your back leg underneath you, I feel like it gets quite safe because you're yeah, basically okay. making yourself like a little ball and it gives you the control to ride down like the proper yeah. way. Yeah, because right? that's just something that I'm getting a bit sort of conscious of is just really, you know, getting the... I don't know, just the strap thing, you know, that's something that as you start doing more of these sort of moves in critical sections of the waves and like coming down in the wave, you know, I'm sort of just uh, being a bit more careful because, you know, back in the day when I was 21, if I twisted my ankle, okay, I'm out for a week. But now if I do it, it's, uh, yeah, it's a good month or two or three, you know what I mean? So I'm sorry, yeah. I have to play it a bit more. Uh, I agree. A little bit, I mean, yeah, it's a bit tricky. It's like you say, when you go for the goose screw, which is you're landing off the back, it's actually very safe. And sometimes, like, again, as I tell the guys on the clinics, if you're turning into a wave like this, right, if you carry on going up for a wave 360, look what happens. The gear, I mean, this one may be a bad example, but the gears can kind of go to the left of you. And actually your feet and your body can come out the side you yeah. can come out that way. So it's actually safer. You can let go of your gear at this point when you've got a massive wave and the gear comes out and you come out the foot straps. If you yeah. turn here because you're scared, then your your gear is between you and the wave. Yeah. And when your gear is between you and the wave, that is when your feet get stuck in the straps because the board gets pressed onto your feet. Whereas actually when you usually go for a wide reel or a wave 360, you're turning in the board actually and your foot, your board get pushed away from your feet. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, 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 no, for sure, for sure. I mean, this one's a bad example because you can see my leg actually gets stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> Which didn't end that well. But that's, that is because the mass tip catches yeah. here. Mark, what did I do? I, th I think you just had a lot of power and you didn't push with the front hand that's yeah. why the that, that's why the tip got I think you're right I, yeah. I don't think I wanted to land in is yeah. what I actually think yeah, but, 
but you, you can actually see that once you get the pro the projection, you are kind of going with it. You, you are not really yeah. trying to push yeah. it around or pull it around. So but that, I, can, I can tell people now if they want to look cool and look like they tried something, a wave 360 out the back can be the move because, like I just <laughs> said, you can come into it like this. Everyone's going, oh, my God, he went for a wave 360. But actually, when you can do them, you can land out the back really nicely, quite easily, without any risk at all. If that mm. map doesn't catch, I land out facing the right way. It's nice and easy. Everyone goes, oh, he went for a wave 360. But when you really go for it and you land in the in the bits there, that is when it can be nasty on your ankle sometimes again on that size of wave starts to get things can happen yeah in any size of wave but you know what i mean the bit about hitting the wave flat that's something i didn't think about mark it's a good tip because i i'm pretty much hitting it uh on rail yeah the, that's like, trying to yeah like once you are able to get in that like a vertical approach to the lip that vertical position that's like the the biggest tip to land back in the wave you know okay. if you are just trying to rotate it doesn't matter but if you are really trying to aim to land back in the wave that's <laughs> just to aim uh, with the board flat into the into the wave into the lip yeah so a couple of points i mean i'm just I'm, I'm, you know because i i like to keep it simple otherwise it's too much to think yeah. about but no, i think I, I think i think the the big key points for me personally and maybe other people here is but when you go in the wave is to get in front of the wave just to give you that time to get back up so you don't have to be on rail by the time you're back at the top because if you don't do a hard enough bottom tail a bottom turn then you are on your rail because you're trying to keep yeah. turning it at the top whereas if you give yourself the time at the bottom yeah. then yeah so i think that's two key things for me that i've taken away from this apart from also the, yeah. the sheeting out thing but uh yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can see here, Ben, uh, the, this one is really nice. And you can see what I was talking about. Like, he starts the bottom turn. His rig is forward, getting all that drive. And as soon as he, he pushes to go vertical, like, you can see his front hand getting close to him. His hip is kind of helping the board drive even more into the lip, even more vertical. And then he just, he just tags around. Now pulls. And just gets his back leg underneath him. Yeah, that that That's was good. that was for sure the first style of of three sixty I learned. Yeah. That was for me the easier one to almost get in my head. And but then, I, this... but I feel like you you probably yeah I think you probably were good at the turns and you know at yes. bottom turning you know and I feel like. That's the the big difference there, you know. You can because yeah. if you don't, if you are not on rail and you you don't have the timing right, it's it gets more a little bit more complicated. <laughs> and then this this one, the more down the line. Bam! That was nice. Yeah, yeah. You, you you can see here he's like a little bit more mid face, and then just like he uses that all that hip. To bring the gear into the lip. Actually, I actually three sixty'd over that dude. <laughs> <laughs> now, now he's gonna chase you for that. That's true, man. If that had gone wrong, that could have got I pretty thought, ugly. I said it after it's uh -huh. Simo from the, the Simo Center in Tenerife, and afterwards he was like, "He did realize I was there." I'm like, "I don't even know anymore." <laughs> 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 that was pretty funny but yeah, yeah nice, no but i think nice. it's good like you said to to get the key points so like i said that's why you're here because you're going to take away those key points i think it's interesting so open keeping that rail on going early it's it's helping yeah. me form a video a 360 video that's why we're doing this podcast it's not even for you guys at home it's almost to clarify what are the you know the key points I think it's, yeah. I think it's interesting. I think yeah. also, you know, because you you know sailing coros, you know, it's, it's cross on, and I've never been to Pozo, but I guess there's similarities there. But one thing I'm finding tricky is like like for me, coros is would be a great place to try to learn why maroos, but it's maintaining the bottom turn speed when it's cross on. You know, like it's 
that's a yeah. real skill in itself as well because you think, oh, it's pretty easy, you know, you just bottom turn. But, of course, if you don't have great technique, you kill off a lot of your speed going, you know, you just lose a lot of apparent wind in your, in your sail. Yeah. And then, point. yeah, so I'm finding, like, when you see you guys up at Pozo, you just go, you know, you just smack into it and stuff. But that's, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I that's another thing for me is maintaining the speed cross on because if it's cross, if it's cross or cross off, well, you can have pretty sloppy technique and still be fanging down the line. But as soon as it's cross on, that's where it's hard. You know, you kill your speed really easily. Um, but that's probably, I don't know, any other tips about that? Like maintaining speed cross on? Pushing the pushing the sail forward. For me, that's like the biggest Forward. Tip. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because you, you're just keeping, you're, you're helping the, the sail drive the board, you know? And keep yeah, it yeah. Okay. If you're just leaning back, you're just going to be sitting on, tail, on the tail kick of the board pushing water. And then if you push the rig forward, you have the board, you help the board to sit uh, flat and just get all that uh, planing surface. And yeah, it's yeah. Committing as well, committing to that. that, that yeah. Yeah. Board, yeah, yeah, which is yeah, very yeah. Difficult for a lot of people. And you just saying that makes me think that should be the video before any other video because I think it's a really, really key point. You know, onshore wave riding and clue first wave riding. I mean, we've been doing it for ages. You take it for granted. That's kind of normal. You know, I think it's really interesting when you see the freestylers go into onshore sailing and they're used to like switch stance clue first. And this is, you know, it really helps your onshore sailing. If you can sail switch stance clue first on flat water, you know, come into a jibe, carry on going out. And as soon as you've got that power, it really, really helps. It really helps. Yeah, you look yeah. at Grito and stuff like this, how they pull off moves because they've got so much pressure. They've got so yeah. much control. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And again, I was saying 360s are easier in those cross, on, you know, onshore conditions, but they're only easier if you can get into that position and, you you know, you can you can keep that position, which is this hand's kind of close in, your front hand, your back hand's out. I think it's quite yeah. a key point, that. It's a key point. But yeah, I think you're right. You know, down the line is easier to get speed, but I would say it's harder to do the 360. Yeah, yeah, because I was on the east coast of Australia, and that was like cross, cross off, and then I moved over to WA, and then it became cross on. So I had to like completely rethink how to bottom turn because it becomes muscle memory. But well, the part that I found tricky with cross on as well is when it's cross, cross off you can look down the line and go, okay, I can see a section coming. I'm going for that. Whereas, whereas cross on, it's a bit, I found it harder to read the wave because, you know, you, you, you're going upwind, you're looking back over your shoulder and having to preempt it a bit. It's a bit harder to preempt the section, I, I found. Like it's... Um, sounds like Coro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's Coro's, yeah, obviously. But um, that's, it's, it's, it's just tricky. Yeah, is it? Yeah, okay, yeah. Because I'm thinking back when you're saying that, I've just got this vision of Coros of you're like okay. you're going, like you say, you're going along the wave with the back yep. of the wave, and yep. you keep yep. looking, you're going, Is it time to go yet? Is exactly. It time to go yet? And then you go, Right, I'm gonna go. And then it takes you way longer exactly to get to where you think you would have been. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's, it is tricky that it definitely oh, so is Pozo is Pozo is a bit easier in that aspect, is it? It's than Coros? I would say oh, same as it. Okay. Tenerife is even worse. Tenerife is is the, one of the hardest places to know when to bottom turn. It's yeah. very easy. If you watch the live stream, you'll see a lot of people going too late every time. <laughs> you know, yeah. and you, you, I have to tell myself, go earlier than you think, because by the time you're yeah. going along the wave and you turn back, it's very, very easy to go too late. Yeah. And then you've got nothing. You're literally there yeah. going, waited all this time for the wave. Um, exactly so yeah yeah and, and but going early is also rubbish you know if you if you go early and you come up and you clue first and you've got no wave to uh, turn that's you, right yeah yeah also, you just flounder yeah. the in the yeah exactly no so look, it's a yeah. tricky it's definitely a tricky move but i, I can see there's a few key points there that'll uh help you get started that's for sure yeah um yeah there's a good comment cross on is quite different in 35 knots to 20 25 knots because in that case, you're traveling at the speed of the true wind. Anyone? 
I'm not sure I fully understand it. I don't. I was hoping Paul would. <laughs> Crosshorn is different. Maybe he's talking about 2025 knots Crosshorn or something. Comparing cross shore to cross on, oh, I don't know. Is it? Is it... I, th- I think maybe maybe it means when you are going, maybe when you bottom turn in favor of the wind. Does that make sense? Maybe it's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You go back into it because you get the full power. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, I'm not uh... sure I understand it. Well, boys. That was good. Um, let's just change the subjects a little bit. You both going to Fiji? Yeah. Before we wrap well, hopefully. up. Hopefully. I haven't Mark, I haven't actually got sorry, go. You haven't got your ticket. <laughs> no, You've got I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting a ticket from Simeon because he's Fiji Airways are a sponsor and uh okay. yeah, that's uh, I think ours are the uh the last the last tickets to be uh you know, um what do you call it? Booked <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> that's only you both make. <laughs> Mark, you're obviously going, you're joint first yeah. in the world right now. Uh, actually, not not anymore after after Chile. <laughs> ah, because it counts. Yeah, it, it, less points, but it kind of counts as well. Um, so, like for example, uh, some of the Japanese uh, kids they went, and uh, and Philip went as well. So then, people that went in both events, they are slightly ahead now. <laughs> so, an interesting point, which I didn't think of. Let's say there's not enough wind at certain events this year. Yeah, could that be a decider? Yeah, I think so. Okay, never thought yeah. about it like that. I think, uh, yeah. I mean, let's hope that's not the case, though. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be the case. Anyway, go to Fiji. What have you packed? Tell me what you've got in the quiver. Um, I mean, normally I freak out quite a bit, as you know. I need quite a bit of gear. <laughs> but uh, I took basically 153, 250s, 247s, 145s, two boards. I'm probably only going to be always on the same board on 80, 87, but I took a 93 in case it's really light. How heavy are you? And now I'm 82 kilos. Oh, 83. Yeah, I put on some weight, mate. <laughs> you have. Yeah. Are, you on, are you on quad or thruster? It depends on uh, on which board. There are certain boards I have. I like them as, uh, as thrusters and then some others as quads. For the ones I'm taking to Fiji, just like the 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 grip, uh, I'm taking uh, just quad sets with me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Have you sailed there before, or never, never? Yeah. I mean, cool. So it's going to be interesting, um, but I'm excited. I was in Mauritius just now. We had the photo shoot um, a week ago, and I was there cool. for a couple of weeks. So I think, yeah, it was. I guess it's a good training. You know, it's. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah, we got some good waves and, you know, it's quite fast, uh, one of the spots. Uh, so, yeah, it was fun. So, I think Sick. I definitely got a bit of training in uh, with during the shoot. So, it was nice. Are you, go- are you going early to Fiji? I'm going a few days earlier. Um, like, I'm getting there the 27th and I think the first possible day of contest is the first. So... Uh, so just correct me if I'm wrong. You can't sail it before the competition or you can you you can uh, you can but just it's going to be full of surfers most likely so okay. it's going to be you know if i think it's going to be hard if uh, 20 of us show up a week before the contest and waves are firing <laughs> and then everyone's trying to get waves i think it might be a little hard but yeah, yeah. let's see again never been so i don't know how the setup looks but yeah I, I, have you seen the forecast paul obviously i don't i, don't, I haven't looked but um, I I don't subscribe to any of the uh, the forecasts. So I only get to see like you know when you don't subscribe and you only see like five days ahead or whatever. Yeah, five six days. But um, from what I saw, I think the first, which is the first day of the event, looked like it was going to be maybe six foot. Yeah, you know, like you know, like maybe I don't know logo to mast, maybe you know something I was like about that. To say, I've been in Fiji ninety seven or something. And they said to me, oh, the reef today is six foot. And I thought, oh, six foot? I'm five, yeah. ten, you know? Yeah. So like bigger than me. I got there. <laughs> it was like fucking massive. I was like, oh, it's a bit bigger than six foot? Like, was <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like a wine six foot or something. But, yeah, um, yeah I don't know. Fiji is a bit of a mystery as well. Because I've been there once. I didn't sail at Cloudbreak. I, I sailed at this other spot, which is kind of like a – 
you know, it's like a second uh, second option to cloud break, and it's a, it's it's a pretty. It's like you, you'd be sitting there with no waves for 20 minutes and all of a sudden just a bomb set just appears and you're just like, oh, shit, where did this thing come from? And it's it's pretty, you know, like it's it's not as maybe, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it can be a bit tricky with the conditions and the wind as well. Like you look at the weather forecast, you think, oh, it doesn't look like much wind and it could be 25 knots, two kilometres up the reef and zero knots where, you, you know, there's like these little microclimates yeah. and things. So it's a bit of a, you know, the winds, yeah. I mean, the swell, it doesn't look, from what I can see, for the first half of the event, it looks like at the start is going to be the biggest, not necessarily big, but the biggest, and then sort of taper off a bit. And then the second half, um, I don't know. So fingers crossed another swell appears during that, you know, that window. So we'll see. On wind, Guru, I'm just checking now. It looks, yeah, it looks pretty big on the... The 31st, and then decent size on the first day of the event, and then yeah, but smaller waves. Then, but I mean, yeah. I guess even if it's smaller, I think the wave must be pretty fun, you know, even yeah. if it's like that high. I guess, never been, yeah, again, I guess, yeah, yeah, I'm guessing, yeah. Look, as long I think as long as you get logo high, then you'll be able to shred on it, basically, yeah. Um, and the other thing is, I think, um if it's logo with the odd mass ones, then it'll actually be sick because you guys will be probably, you know, trying pretty hard without thinking that you're going to ax yourself on some double mass high wave or something. You know what I mean? Like, you you know, it'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, some, uh, rippable conditions that we can as well throw some moves on. I yeah, think no, exactly. Like to throw a little bit of variety, not just like a, yeah, double mass. <laughs> Bottom, bottom to top would be nice. Yeah, not variety. Nah, for sure. No, no, it should be good. And okay. hopefully, this live stream as well. You know, with, with Simeon, uh, I was chatting to Simeon before, and um, yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see what uh, we can do because uh, this event might be the first wave event we've had in a while. I mean, the Cabo Verde one was pretty good, but uh, fingers yeah. crossed. There's a good uh, media coverage of this as well to sort of lift the profile of wave sailing. You know, that's. Well, you're going, mate. We're we're looking. Yeah. Forward. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I I, I don't want to talk it up too much, no but pressure. from what I can hear so far, it's it's looking kind of you know, hopefully promising. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see when we get there because so uh, who knows? Yeah, okay. we'll see. Well, boys, I'll let you go. Um, Cheers for tuning in. Thanks for the tips. I need to be a bit more. I've realised when I do these podcasts, especially with free six stuff, that has got to be very because it's so massive. It's like the topic is huge. <laughs> I think it needs some sort of uh, list of things to go through. So I'm going to work on that. But uh, cheers for tuning in. Uh, thanks for everyone for watching. We will. I will be making a three sixty video at some point. I've been threatening this for about three years, but uh, at some point it will happen. Good luck in Fiji. I'll probably speak to you boys before then, but um, uh, you, I hope it. I hope you score big time. Let's see. Let's, Let's hope. See. Let's hope. I'm excited. Cheers.